Good morning. Let's confess the Word of God together. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. I have been delivered out of the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Therefore, Satan no longer rules over my life. He has no dominion in my life. He has nothing in me or my life. But Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and my Father rule and reign in me and through me in Jesus' name. Today, I have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. The Lord opens my ears to hear as the learned. And the Word of God goes forth in me in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. This teaching on faith has been so rich and so good. So let's uh, review just a little bit. In Hebrews 6, verse 12, he says that you be not slothful. So that is an admonishment that we are not to be lazy or slothful. What be slothful about what? Because, you know, there are a lot of things to be diligent about. But he's saying do not be slothful about inheriting the promises, about taking the promises. This is the will of God for you and me. This is what he, um, Jesus did for us, is so that you and I would inherit all of the promises, and that should be the goal as a Christian, that we be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience or steadfastness inherit the promises. For listen to this, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Now, when he said swore, that, that is a covenant term so God swore by himself, because there was none greater to swear by, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. So that is the promise to Abraham and his seed in their generation. And you and I are the seed of Abraham, according to Galatians chapter 3, that if we are Christ, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What are we heirs of? Surely, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. So that is one of the major blessings that we are to receive. Then in Hebrews 10, 38, he says, Now the just shall live by his faith by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Then Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So let me elaborate on that that the just shall live by faith. This is not to just get one prayer answered. We are in such a better place than anybody before us because like Bartimaeus, he only received that one miracle. You and I can go to the Father. As a matter of fact, we have an open invitation to the throne room for his children to come in any time and receive from his generous hand. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In other words, that you may obtain whatever it is you're asking for. And let me tell you, God never gets tired of you asking. He has told you to come and ask because I've heard religions say, oh, well, don't just go asking all the time. God said to. So let's do what God said. God said, come and receive. And even in Hebrews 4, he says that we should fear lest any promise being left us of entering into his rest. 
any of you should seem to come short of it. So that is the will of God for us. Don't let religion uh, cause you to not inherit what belongs to you and make you feel guilty. No, the more you receive, the, hap the more pleasure you give your Heavenly Father. So then, how does faith come? Faith comes only one way. Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And so that is the only way that faith comes. Years ago, the Lord spoke to my husband, Frank, and said, for him to learn how to live by faith and then teach my people how to live by faith. So every day, every moment of every day that we can live out of the kingdom and receive the goodness of God out of his hand. So we did that. And we as a family learned how to live by faith together, teaching the children so that they learned to believe God for their toys for their motorcycles, for their cars, for their spouse, for whatever. So that's what we are learning now as children. Now listen to this. You are not just mere human. You know, you hear Christians say, well, I'm only human. No, you're not. You are not just human. You are a son or daughter of God if you are born of God. If you're born again, you are a son or daughter of God. And you now have his DNA on the inside of you. You have his spirit living in you. You are not mere human. So it is important that we realize who we are. In uh, Galatians 4, 6 through 7, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Daddy, Father. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. In Philippians 2, 15, that you, be not, that, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that you may rejoice in the day of Christ. And then in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. We're not going to be the sons of God. If you're born of God through, uh, like Peter said, begat he us through the word of truth, through his word, through his DNA, his the incorruptible seed, you are actually literally born of God. And, and Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of you and I to walk in our sonship and to walk and be like God. And Jesus even said this. He said, is it not written that you are little gods? You know, dogs have dogs. Cats have cats. God begat gods, little gods. And in Ephesians 5.1, he says, Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Well, how do we imitate God? What is God, what does he do? What, what is he like? What, so we must imitate him. But the only way we're going to see that is in the word. So Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, like unto him whom he believed. This is talking about Abraham, our father of faith. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they already were. That's how we imitate God. God calls things that be not as though they were, and we call things that be not as though they were. So, let's go now to how faith operates. 
how Jesus operated by faith and teaches us how to operate by faith. Mark 11, 22 through 23. And Jesus answering said unto them, the disciples, have the faith of God, for verily I say unto you. Now notice the next verse is not that you as disciples are only my apostles, only my disciples. He says, no, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So let's focus on the saying part because like Brother Hagin said, that God pointed out to him that God mentioned saying three times. In Luke 17, verse 5, the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it would obey you. So again, he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted into the sea, and it, the tree, would obey you. Also, it, your words, would obey you. Well, we're going to look at this some more tomorrow. Use your words to accomplish things. Use your words not just to talk. Don't use the phrase, I'm just saying. Take that out of your vocabulary. God never just said something. He always purposed and used his words to accomplish things. And we'll look at that scripture tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for our inheritance. Thank God for the gift of faith. And thank God for the Holy Spirit who is teaching us how to live by faith.